Okay, hello and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Uh, Encompass Live is Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event where we do presentations and sessions on various library topics of interest to the Nebraska library world. Um, we do these every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. They are free one-hour sessions and they are recorded so if you can't attend the live sessions you can also always go in and listen to the recordings afterwards. Uh, we do a mixture of presentations, interviews, um, web tours, mini training sessions, anything we can think of or that you may think of that would be of interest to libraries and librarians across the state. Um, this morning, we are doing uh, government information for you and your customers. Uh, Beth Goble, right here, and her staff, who you can't see on camera, <laughs> um, are here this morning to talk about all the different resources that they have in their department. So, take it away. Hi everybody, this is Beth. Um, first off, I want to tell you this is not going to be a workshop, it's just an informal tour of some of the government information services that we provide here and, and maybe hopefully show you some cool sites that you can use with your customers or uh, help your customers know how they can find government information on their own. So yeah, we've got a fairly large crew here and we're first off, we'll just all introduce ourselves and I'll mention that the, the first four people are all people on the documents team, what we call it around here. And Emily is our cataloging librarian who's actually um, a colleague of Chris's on the network services team or whatever you guys are calling yourselves now. That's what we are for now. For now. <laughs> okay. We'll so, have a new title coming soon. <laughs> so first off, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. And I know some of you are regular, so you've already seen me on a couple of these other ones and um, on the Meet the Commission one, but I am Beth Goebel, and something that you might not all know about me is that I'm originally from Alberta, Canada. I have lived here for nearly 30 years in Nebraska, and I've got two lovely granddaughters that I always like to brag about. And I've been doing something to do with government documents for most of my library career. My very first job out of library school, they, and they didn't tell me this until the day I showed up for work, and this was Kingston Public Library in uh, Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and I was the new reference librarian there, and they said, oh, by the way, we didn't tell you until you got here that you're going to have to catalog our government documents. Oh. And they were, they were Ontario government documents and uh, a few um, Canadian na national government documents. And we even got a few pamphlets from the U.S. government. So that was my first intro to government documents. And hey, I'm still doing it. So they, <laughs> they can be pretty interesting. Didn't scare you away. <laughs> nope. And we kept most of them in this, this dungeon down in the basement. The, the library was an old dairy building and there were no windows. And, and it was really like going down to a dungeon there. But... Hey, I came back. So anyway, that's me. So let Bonnie introduce herself and we'll just go around. Yeah, I'm Bonnie Hensel. I've been with the Library Commission since 1997, right? Yes. And prior to that, I was in technical services at Free State College Library. I am married and have three kids. And some of you know her from the terror board. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want you to see him today. I'm Lori Sailors, and I've been at the Library Commission since 1979, yep. so I've been here since dawn of time. Well, well I think our, our director, Rod Wagner, and Lori and Vern yeah. Bias, or maybe the three... It's Rod, Vern, that, and I. So. In that order, okay. Yeah. And I've worked in government documents the whole time I've been here, so, you know, a little bit with state at one time, but now it's strictly federal. And, We have manual control right here. Jennifer? I'm Jennifer Rampy, and I have been with the commission for eight years, and I am married and have a seven year old daughter. I'm Emily Nimsenkon, and I'm probably the newest one here. I just started at the commission last October. I'm a cataloging librarian, and I make sure all the GovDocs are accessible through our catalog. And I am married with no kids, just a cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this is Beth. Yeah, I'm married, too. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't intentionally leave that out. I am, too. And I've got a cat and a dog, so there you go. I'm a legitimate librarian. I've got pets. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, next slide. And... Some of you, I think Ellen, you may have been watching these just about from day one, is, is this is the mugshot of the documents team, so you can see for yourself who we all are, and my apologies, Emily's not in here, but as I mentioned, actually she's, um, she's in a different, she is in a different team, but she's still part of our team too. 
So we'll just move on now and tell you a little bit about the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse Service. And keep going. She's moving my coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, this way you can talk yeah, right. and see the camera. Also. There we go. Right. Uh, the reason we're called the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse Service is because that was the name of uh, the service that was set up in 1972 by a state statute that uh, directed the Library Commission to begin this clearinghouse service and to do two things. And one of them was that we would become a depository library with the Federal Depository Program. And the other one was that we would become, we would start ourselves a Nebraska Publications Program. So uh, as far as the federal depository program goes, is we, uh, we were a very large selective. In fact, at one time, and Lori can chime in because she knows we were everything about it. Regional. Yeah, we, we were actually a joint regional with, with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, although I suppose that wasn't, we weren't legally a joint regional because I think that's still an issue with the feds, and, and that's all technical stuff that probably doesn't <laughs> interest you, but at any rate, there was a time when we were selecting 100% of the, the documents that were put in the federal depository program, and that is a program that is run by the government printing office in Washington, D.C., and um, most federal agencies are directed to provide uh, copies of publications that they produce. And I think it's the same kind of criteria that we would use. It can be statutes, uh, reports, uh, things that are multiply produced and intended for public distribution. So, you know, the classified CIA reports are not going to be in there. And there's always lots of controversy about what gets in the program and what doesn't. But uh, it is thousands and thousands of things every year. Uh, well, back in the 80s, I believe, uh, we just didn't have room for all those documents, uh, so we, uh, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln became the regional depository, which means they do, they're required to get 100% of everything that's put in the program, and we became a selective. And over the years, we have uh, cut back on our selection profile, and we did a, a big cutback uh, a few years ago uh, because we're close enough to the UNL library that we don't need to be both collecting a lot of the same things. So we're now pretty small. We're, we collect about 2% of uh, what is put in the program. So just as an example, uh, last year we added um, less than 800 documents and there were you know, years ago it was thousands, and now it's we concentrate on things that our customers are most likely to need. So that's what we get for the Federal Depository Program. And I'm going to show you a couple of, of resources related to the Government Printing Office later on. Another uh, thing, and Lori's going to have to help me with this because I didn't look up the date, when we became a census data center. Uh, it was back in the 80s. Back in the 80s. Okay, that's a good decade. That was a good decade. <laughs> no, it was prior to 80 because they were in the 80s census. So. Yeah, okay. We, um, as far as I know, this is something that is is done is operated through the census, the Federal Census Bureau, and every state has a census data center. And actually, we are not the center. We are what's called a, a, a census data affiliate. So the, the center is located at the Center for Public Affairs Research at UNO. And uh, it is now. I think it was at UNL at one time. It's now at UNO. And we are an affiliate. And that just means that we have agreed that we will provide uh, census information and um, information services for uh, people in this area. So we, we work with them, and they have a, an annual conference every year that we attend where somebody comes from the uh, Census Bureau and gives us an update on what's new with the, the census. And if we have time today, I'll probably give you a quick tour of the census website, too. So um, the one that we currently spend the most, most of our time on is the Nebraska Publications Program, and that is something that um, we were directed to do. And what we do is collect publications from Nebraska state agencies. So we are like the GPO for the state of Nebraska. And we collect things that are multiply produced and intended for public distribution. So a lot of annual reports. We still get newsletters. Uh, we get um, directories. And you're going to see uh, one that Bonnie is going to show you later. 
and it, we have a v pretty large collection of those now, and we don't weed those. When we get those, we, we are committed to keeping those forever so that they'll be available to Nebraskans. So right now we have um, about 153,000 state publications in our collection. And we used to uh, do a microfiche distribution program to, to 13 other depository libraries. And uh, back in 2005, we started doing something different with those. Um, we, we still have a good relationship with those depositories, but we've expanded the program and it's now an EPUBS program. And I think at this point, I'm gonna give Bonnie a chance to tell you a little bit about that. She's the one who's responsible for that. Okay. The e-publications program is what I do is I basically will go out and search the agency websites and find out if the document is electronic and if it is I will download make a copy of their file and download it to our server so that way we can guarantee that it why did you do that <laughs> <laughs> Lori just took her big drink thing out of the way so that we download it to our server so that we know that it will not disappear um, and another thing I do is instead of the microfiche program, we now do a CD that is distributed to the depositories that want one. Basically, um, we have what, four, only four that are asking for it. Mainly the universities. Mainly libraries. the universities. But um, uh, one good thing about the EPUBS program is even if you're not a depository, you can still have access to those electronic documents because they are put in our catalog, and we do have an update list that is on the EPUBS site. Okay. You want to go to the yes. I think as Krista tells you every week that um, the links that we're going to be going to today, most of them are on our delicious account, so we'll be able to see them later. Okay. okay, this outlines pretty much what our program is about. Can you scroll down? Where's the update part? There's the eDoc alerts list is something that I put up and it will it's a listing of all the new documents that we've added to our catalog and are available online. If you want to just, can you click on the update of winter of 09? Is there in here? Yeah. These are the most recent ones that have been collected and burned onto a CD. And it's a, this list will stay up there and you can, you should be able to go directly to the images from here. And this would be what you would come up with, is the electronic version of the biennial report. Well, I think it's all public library folks uh, listening in today, and I don't know how often you might get asked for this kind of information, uh, but if one, I think Bonnie maybe I'm taking some words out of her mouth, but uh, one of the advantages to this ePubs program is that you don't have to be a depository library to, to use these. You can go in and look at these eDocs alert lists. You'll see those same URLs in WhatsApp doc, and we'll show you that in a minute, to our, our blog that has listings in it. And you can take the, the, you can download those records into your own online catalog. So if there's certain things that you know your customers would really be looking for, you don't have to take them all. You could be selective and actually we'll give you the OCLC number so it's you can the, on the update Yeah, list. it's on the list. The so you could actually add selectively add some of these pu online publications to your own catalog. And did you want to tell them about the difference between a PDF and an HTML? And a, and a, well, oh, the HTML. In yeah. Oh, in the oh, alert yeah. list, there are um, serial, like the annual reports and stuff. There's one. There would be one link that would give a list of all. Yeah, it's a little hard to see here, and you you'll be able to see the, it better. The audit report of the state college system. Go to that one. It's an HTML. It would be, you would get instead of the going directly to the document, it would bring up a listing of all the reports that we have electronically for each year. That way you only have to go and you're not trying to decide which is the most recent because it will show you which one is newest. 
So oh, hopefully, cool. if for some reason you wanted to have yeah. the audit reports of the state college system in your catalog, that's the URL you could use, and then you would never have to go in and change it because Bonnie just keeps adding to it every time she gets a new one. Okay, so um, for now that probably tells you enough about the, um, the state EPUBS program. Yeah. I thought maybe Jennifer and I could both talk <laughs> about this. Um, we used to have a bi-monthly publication called What's Up Doc. We are actually required by that state statute to maintain a listing of all the new state government publications that we receive. So we used to do it as a, a newsletter that came out every other month. And uh, a few months back, we changed it to a blog. And it gives you exactly the same information. Uh, it also has some uh, news items in there. Um, yeah, I just put up a posting about the Google data search being launched, which is kind of a cool thing you can do with Google now to look for mainly statistics from the, the federal government. And then uh, now you see links like this. If you want to just click on that one that says new publications received. Yeah. And Jennifer can tell you a little bit about this. She prepares these lists. Well, I just um, type up these list of the publications that, you know, the state publications that we receive. There's very few federal publications that go in there anymore since we don't select very many. And I just type up this list and there it is. And it, it looks a lot like those lists that Bonnie was showing you. And you can mm -hmm. see the OC, LC numbers in there. Um, and also the hot link to it, and you can easily see the difference between the eight, the ones that end in HTML, those are the ones that are going to go to um, one of those index type lists, so there's probably going to be multiple ones. And if it just says PDF at the end, that means we don't, um, it's just a one-time publication so far. And eventually Bonnie might make an index page if we get more of them. So that's another way you could um, find out what if you saw something in here that you were interested in adding to your own catalog, that would give you an idea of what they what they are. And that's probably about all we need to say about What's Up Doc right now. You can find What's Up Doc um, from our main, from that EPUBS page that Bonnie just showed you. We linked to it from there. You can also find it from the main Library Commission site, um, just by I think, or if you went to our publications, oh, here. and um, you could find it from there too. And I'm assuming you could find it by searching too. Yeah. Mm. So now the that link goes to the blog, and then archived issues goes to uh, when we were still producing individual print issues of, of it. So that's our way of letting people know what's new at the Library Commission. So, and Lori probably remembers coming up with that name. What's up, Doc? Oh. That, was, <laughs> that was even before Lori. Okay. <laughs> Everything's measured by before Lori or after Lori. Okay. Okay. So why don't we go to the, the next slide in the PowerPoint? Now we're going to get into the fun stuff that you'll find more useful, probably. And that is what government information services you can get or you can refer your customers to from the Library Commission. And you, I'm hoping that you all know about the Ask a Librarian link that's directly off uh, the NLC website. And uh, why don't we just go there? And I'm okay. not, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, that one. I think that's it. There we go. Okay, and hopefully you're all familiar with this, that you can use this to chat with us, you can use it to email with us, and as far as the government information goes, it's, it's, there aren't separate people here who only answer government information type questions. Is uh, Myself and Lisa and Julie are the ones that, that get your emails if you use this online form, and I know many of you use um, the same 
forms to submit questions. You also use the interlibrary loan forms. All that stuff goes to the same three people. And the email for this one, as you probably know, is ready at nlc.state.ne.us. You can chat. We could chat if you want. Right here. Sure. It's downstairs. <laughs> it's either Julie or Lisa. Huh? They were kind of fighting about who was going to be down there at 930, so. <laughs> It's Lisa. We just looked through the window. For any of you that ever been, have been here, our meeting room's got windows where you can see down into the reference area. <laughs> Hi. Okay. How can I help you? I don't know. Just telling him. <laughs> yeah, you just did. Okay. And then, of course, you can call us on our 800 number and so on. So we can just go say goodbye to them yeah. for now. <laughs> okay, yeah, and just go back to our slide. Oh, back to the slide? Okay. Yeah. Well, or I can just, I just tell you. Sure. Well, another uh, thing that, that is. Um, interesting, I guess, about about our service is we lend out just pretty much everything. We have a very few things that we don't lend out, like the U.S. code in print, uh, which is the, the U.S. statutes, but nearly all of our collection is for loans. So in addition to all those electronic publications, Bonnie makes sure that uh, we have a print copy as well, and a lot of times I think she has to print that off from the agency's website because they're not as good as they used to be about supplying us with print copies of stuff that, oh, well, it's on the internet, you know, they don't have to give it to us. But so there is a very large collection there, and just about all of it is for loan. And we have things that um, probably other libraries have that they wouldn't lend out. So we even have a set of the, of the Nebraska statutes that we lend out. And we also get, as part of our program, we've really had uh, great collaboration with the University of Nebraska Press. And we have a really large collection to going back to 1972 of University of Nebraska Press publications. We're a little selective about which ones we get from them, but um, we do... We do, you can either interlibrary loan that through regular interlibrary loan channels, or you can actually tell your, your customers they can do direct loan with us. In other words, they can just phone us up or email with us, and we'll do a direct loan, and they don't have to go through their home library for an interlibrary loan. Um, we'll do it direct. And, of course, it's all free. We will do uh, a certain amount of government information research for people. Uh, this is a, an exception to our usual ready reference where if it's just somebody um, coming in to ask us anything at all, we would probably not spend more than five or ten minutes on it. But if it's government information, we do a few things that are a little more lengthy. And one of those is they're called legislative histories. And Lori has been through the trenches with how to do a legislative history on with federal documents, but does anybody know what a legislative history is? Anybody out there? You can answer um, in uh, the text chat if you do know. <laughs> Or if you want to guess, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I, so again, I don't know how likely it is that this would happen in your library, but if somebody came to you and said, I want to know the history of how the legislature passed the, the smoking ban, the statewide smoking ban, and supposing it was like three years from now and they're asking about that, um, what you would have to do is... is find copies of the legislative journal and find uh, the days that that was discussed uh, in a committee meeting or on the floor of the legislature. You'd have to get the number of the bill. That's all the type of research you'd have to do. And we actually have microfilm here that we buy from the clerk of the legislature that's got transcripts of the floor debates on the legislature. And very few libraries have that. We're one of only six in the state that has those. And we also have transcripts of the committee hearings. So 
doing a legislative history for somebody on a bill is a fairly time-consuming process. And I'm not saying we do a lot of these, but we will spend probably up to an hour, hour and a half just on, on it. Or we'll invite somebody to come in and we'll help them use the microfilm here. So we'll do, we'll do more extensive government research than uh, we would just for regular ready reference things. Okay, now um, I want to talk a little bit about some other services that we do, and I wanted to turn over this over to Jennifer now and talk about some of the sort of special things we do for people. Um, I have been doing some scanning. Um, we're doing the governor's addresses to the legislature, and I think if you go to Nebraska Access, oh, okay. we can show you how to find that. And if you scroll down to the search. I think it's I think it's to go over. Yeah. And then um, type in governor. Yeah, we're gonna use Nebraska Access as a jumping off point for a lot of uh, the things we're gonna show you today. And it's the second one down. Where can I find Nebraska Governor's address to the legislature? And right now we just have up there until 2003, but I have scanned several more back to the 40s, I believe, that just have not been put up, up there yet. So that we'll be getting those up there soon. <laughs> <laughs> And also, I keep um, I keep a site up called Legislatures Past and Present. I don't think I go to the search yeah, again. Uh, while you're navigating to that, I'll just jump in and say the reason why this little website exists is we create these uh, little websites in Nebraska Access. It used to be called Best of the Web. Um, it's it's based on customer customers asking us. So we were, we've been asked several times about for inaugural addresses, and they're oftentimes they're. Uh, graduate students, sometimes from other states that are doing research, and as I mentioned, it can be pretty time consuming to dig out those legislative journals, that's where these are, these speeches, and photocopy them and fax them to somebody, so uh, we're being more proactive now with this type of thing, is if somebody's asked us for it several times, well, we might as well get them up on the web so that other people can find them. Okay, and then for the last legislators past and present site, uh, just type in senator. And then the first one, where is the list of Nebraska senators? And this list is just all of the senators past, present. Top link has to put that right there. Now this is Jennifer's site that she adds to. Yeah, you can go pick a senator. Any letter? Mm -hmm. Any chambers? Okay. I just keep this in some <laughs> just some basic information of when they, of the time they served on this. Um, you can search it. What it does, it just right now it just jumps you to the letter of the alphabet, so you have to scroll down to find it. But then I can just type in. So that it will take you just to that letter again. It's oh, not right. a very precise search. Um, uh, okay. And then you just have to scroll down and find her name. I'll do a control F to again. get there. And this list is getting longer and longer. We do have plans to turn this into an ASP database that will do more precise searching. But we found genealogists like this site because um, we're hoping to take it further back in time right now. It just goes back to the unicameral 1937. But we'd like to get all of the state legislators in there eventually, and there are thousands of them. It's amazing when you go farther back just how many there are. So that's an example. Those are two examples of sort of special projects we do, uh, or the, the standing on demand, as we call it. When we, when Krista did that that search um, further back, that that uh, 
showed you the governor's addresses. There was also one there called Governor's Executive Orders, and that was one that Bonnie created by scanning um, Governor's Executive Orders, that top one. So oh. We don't need to spend a lot of time on it, but that's just a... <clears throat> So some of these pages are actually the result of some scanning work that's been done for us. There's now one on with uh, biographies from Nebraska Blue Books that Julie has worked on. So that's part of our services, so let's move on. Next slide. I bet this is exactly the same list you have, except maybe you leave genealogy on your list. Is that so? Do any of you do legal consultations or medical consultations? <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope not. <laughs> and uh, the reason genealogy is on there is simply because we don't have genealogical resources at the Library Commission, other than those Nebraska Blue Books that have um, pictures of state legislators. We really don't have much here that would help a genealogist, so we spend more time referring them to other places that have that information. We can move on. Okay, now uh, we just want to show you a couple of, uh, we're going to go back to Nebraska Access. We're going to do a search. Okay. So, but I will mention while we're over there, just scroll back up in Nebraska Access in case we run out of time. You see that there's a, we have a, a, a lot of web pages in Nebraska Access that are state government related and federal government related. We also have this thing called a related resource over on the side that's state government publications. And if you clicked on that, that will go directly to an online list that's maintained by Bonnie of state government publications. So that's a quick way to find state pubs online, is you can link to it, you can find it directly from Nebraska Access, and we may, we'll come back to that in a minute. So going down and searching, using the search box, and so we've got a lot of federal, state, and local level websites, so I thought I'd just, um, I looked at our Twitter account to see what kind of questions we've been getting, and we've had, just in the last week, it's been really busy, we've had about 40 questions that came in one way or another, and I would say at least 30 of them were government information related, and one that we've had twice in the last week, sadly, is how do I get on food stamps? Mm -hmm. So I added some more information to Nebraska Access on that, so if you typed in food stamps, and, you know, anybody can use this. Um, then you get to one of our pages, and I added, you might have to do a control F to find it, but um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, here it is. Right, yeah, and they have, uh, if you went to that page, there's a link there, because both t both questions I got was how do I apply online, and they have I believe they have a food stamp link here, and if you if you went there, they actually have online forms that people can fill out and print off, and then they're supposed to uh, mail them or take them to their local uh, health and human services office. And there's also a link to where those offices are. So I don't know if you all are getting questions like that with the economy the way it is, but we're sure seeing a lot of those kinds of questions now. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, we're also getting uh, questions. We get questions on tax forms, and we don't need to go through them all, but the same kind of thing. If you get asked for tax forms, you could use the, just use that search box and type in tax forms. and you would find ways to find both federal and state tax forms, and sometimes we get really specific questions. We had one last week on, I have new employees that have asked about publication 919 and 972 when completing their W-4s, and we get some really specific mm -hmm. questions, so we, we, have, we try to have resources like this available. Um, 
Oh, we just last week we had how to get unclaimed property, and we're not going to search in all these. Uh, I said two questions on food stamps, birth certificates, death certificates. That's one we get a lot, both from genealogists and um, other people just needing copies of their own, maybe because they're trying to get on from social services and they need those mm -hmm. that information. Property tax information or uh, property assessments. Um, we've got a. There are a lot of different assessors in the counties now that have their property uh, assessment values up online. And one of my kids is now shopping for a house. So every time he goes to an open house and we get back in on the Lancaster County property assessment site to find out what the assessor says the house is worth. So that can all be found just by searching in Nebraska Access. Okay, let's go to the next slide. I would be remiss if I didn't show you the official state of Nebraska website, <laughs> and it's there's its URL there, so if we could go to that website. Some of you may have been here. A lot of the questions we get are from people who have been on this site and not found what they needed yet, so they're, they ask us a question. It does take a long time to load. They have a lot of graphics. It's very graphics heavy, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I would encourage you to go and take a tour of it uh, while we're waiting for it to come up. I can tell you that they group the services on there across the top basically by who you are. Are you a citizen? Are you a business person? Are you somebody who's moving to Nebraska? Are you a visitor who's just looking for tourism type information? And you can see those links there. They do that. Um, they've also got, um, yeah, we don't need to go into those in any depth. Uh, I did want to show you that they have um, some how do I's a little further down. And if you go to, and these are customized depending on which user group you're in. So you can see how they change when you go in there. And actually some of those link back to some of our Nebraska Access pages. So we do work in cooperation with them. And if you wanna just click on the more how do I's for business. There. Uh oh. Okay, it's really hard to see because they've chosen to do this black background, but in that upper right-hand corner, there's that stack of books and it says reference desk. Well, that's us. Yep, and so we're getting more and more of, of those. Um, we had, this goes to a different email address that still goes back to Beth and Lisa and Julie, or Lisa, Julie, and Beth, whoever, depending what day it is. Um, it's just got a slightly different uh, address so we can track whether or not they're coming off of this page. So we could go ahead and chat with, uh, it's Lisa, right? Yeah. So we won't. Uh, I don't have to bother again. <laughs> you don't have to bother again, no. <laughs> um, but in April, we had uh, 44 questions that we know came in off of this site from people in, or no, that was March. In April, we had about 30, and so far in May, things are really ramping up. We've had 21 questions that we know came in off of, off of there. So you can refer people to ask questions from there, too. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to the rest of the folks here, and they're going to talk about their favorites. I have a funny story about the World Bank book. I've worked with government publications, federal documents, like I said, since the dawn of time. And one day, my daughter decided that she had to do, well, she had to do a report on a, another country. Comes home and She's telling me about this new website that they found and all this wonderful information, but it was top secret for just, you know, certain kids in her class. Well, it ended up being the World Factbook, which has been out there in print and is now only available online. So if we can take a look at it. Are any of you familiar with the World Factbook?
nobody's talking so okay from this page you can select a country up from the top and I'm just gonna we're just gonna select Afghanistan because it's kind of a popular topic right now just to give you an idea what's kind of on here you'll always get a map at the beginning of the page and if you want okay <laughs> okay there's always a map on the first page and then as you go through it you will get all the little information that you need like the background of the country the economics what they you know how much land you know it's like right here it says slightly smaller than texas every I don't know where they get this information, but they have it. They have the climate, they have whatever. And usually when your child or your somebody comes in, they have to know the terrain, the climate, the economics, the how much money they make per person, everything. And this is really a good um, publication that will give you just the basic facts of what you want for a country. And so like, here's the birth rates, the death rates, the median age you know look at that 17 years they only live to like 40 something i think in afghanistan that's the average age life expectancy 44.64 years this is that's just amazing and it's probably because of all the fighting and stuff over there i don't know that was an editorial comment <laughs> um but anyway if you ever have anybody who comes into your library and is looking for you know pretty can you know information about a country and they don't need long editorials or whatever this is a great publication that you can refer your people to and so you could, you could use the search box in nebraska access so you'd eventually get navigated to this um, publication yeah yeah because we, we do have a page in there that's a link to federal resources and this is one of them that's listed on there so, so you don't have to remember the rest of this. You can find it via Nebraska Access. But see, on here you also have the flags of the world. There's a lot more information that you know. And you can also download this publication if you really wanted to and have it, you know, accessible without going online. <clears throat> So there's a lot, a lot of very, you know, there's a lot of good information on there, but I had to tell you my story about <laughs> my daughter. Okay, I'm passing this on. Well, Bonnie's going to tell you how to snoop on some of your yeah. friends, right? <laughs> yeah. One of, one of the most um, weighted on state documents comes out about every August or September, and that's the University of Nebraska personnel roster. And I have people starting end of July emailing me, when's it going to be out, when's it going to be out? Because I'm the only one who puts it up. It is not available electronically through the university. No, they tell people to they check with us. They tell people to check with us, yeah. <laughs> so this is, it gives listings of all of their personnel and what their salaries are. Do you want to search anybody? <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. okay. You got, go to go to the UNL. Any of you roster. got some, somebody you know who yeah, works for the NU system? Mm -hmm. You can find out exactly how much they make, and you, they should be keyword searchable. So if you yeah. um, go there and search Pol Bo Pelini, P E L I, just one L. We figured he's safe because his, it's pretty his, public his what he makes. Could be well known, anyways. This is a they're fairly large documents. There's several hundred pages, so they may take a while for you oh, to yeah, load. Still downloading. Yeah. <laughs> but this is one publication that the university does not make electronic, so it's one of my big scanning projects every year. There he is. I didn't know his name was really Mark. It's Mark. <laughs> Wow, well, this is a font of information. Look, oh, and I saw that. One million. One million, yeah. One foot, one, three, eight, five. There but this, you go. This is when I get a lot of emails prior to it. It's going up. I think this last year I had maybe eight to a dozen people wanting to know when it was going to be available, and they just will not wait. So, so. This, this has the entire NU system. So UNK, yes. the Med Center, UNO, UNL, the Law College, all that. Okay. Uh, typical nickname name is Mark. Yeah. Anybody know where he's from? He's from Ohio. Ohio. Why, why did they nickname him Bo? Because yeah. his name is, I think his 
real name is Mark Anthony, because his dad's name was Anthony. Okay. Well, maybe if your name was Mark Anthony, that's a rather <laughs> inauspicious <laughs> name, considering <laughs> if you know anything about, about Roman history, his fate wasn't too good. So. <laughs> okay. That's my one of my top ones. So. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll go to Emily. A Emily's turn now. Sure. Okay, what I'm showing off is not so much a favorite resource as just I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the fact that these resources are also available through the Library Commission's catalog on our website. So if you would take us out to the homepage. Yeah. And then search the catalog along the side. There it is. It's working. It's working. <laughs> Eventually. I'm not as good as, as Beth with coming up with filler material here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, um, if you do a title search for uh, Nebraska population report in quotation marks, it probably help. Oh, thank you. I can I've test this out and you get a bunch of <laughs> other ones. I'll make it simple on people. Um, no S, I don't think. Nice report. Yeah, I kind of went through my recent things I was working on to find one. We have to say, since Emily joined us, you know, we need, most of you probably know that Deborah Drago was kind of ahead of Net Scriptures was a cataloging librarian, and um, in that transition period when uh, Deborah moved on, so to speak, and before Emily came, we did get a bit of a backlog of state publications, mm -hmm. but since she's been here, I don't know how many hundred she's catalogs, but uh, I think we're up to pretty, pretty current stuff now. Okay, so if you click on the details button, this, you'll get the full record. And basically, I just want to point out, you'll see up at the top it shows print copies are available, but if you scroll down on the whole record, the big whole page, yeah. There's also the web link at the bottom, and this is where all Bonnie's hard work with the EPUBs comes in. Something like this you'll see as an HTML, so it has the index page, which will be updated by Bonnie, so it's continually current in our records. And so that's just a quick example of what you'll find if you come to our catalog. Also, you note, you may see again here, here's that Ask a Librarian chat box that we were playing with on the other page. It's all every page, apparently it's on every page now in the catalog, I, I think guess. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so anytime you're in here and you're like, uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> I don't know, how do I use this? Type in there and Lisa, who's down there right now, or whoever's on the desk can answer, um, chat with you right here from within our catalog if you're having trouble or questions about how to navigate it and get around it. It's there. also really nice when it comes up when you get a search that has no results. Yeah, yes, <laughs> I need to search. Um, we do, if it's working properly, actually you don't see that when we're closed. So you're not going right. to see that if you're... If you know, there's nobody on duty, around. you won't you see that. You guys are open yeah. on weekends and evenings, but we're not. And if we don't want to disappoint people if, you know, they try to chat and nobody answers, that's, that doesn't look too good. So it should only show up when there's actually somebody there who can chat. You know? I'm done. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for us? Okay, does anybody have any questions about anything they talked about today um, uh, for anybody here? Or anything they didn't talk about that maybe you were wanting to hear about? Feel free to um, go ahead and type into the text chat any questions you might have. We can wait for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have time to move on with it. Okay, um, I had one more page I just wanted to let you know about if we had time. So, uh, Krista, this, you can just get to this from the main NLC page. It's, I didn't give Krista this link because I wasn't sure if we were going to have time to get to it. So if you just started here and went to search this site and just typed in government resources and see what happens. Okay, 
Um, that's actually not the one I wanted. So would you back out of here? I'm going to do research up here. Or? No, I want you to use the links for librarians instead. Um, yeah, that one. You know, we've made some changes to our website, and we've now kind of split out some of the things that used to be in what we used to call Best of the Web. The ones that are more librarian-related uh, are now uh, in this section called Links for Librarians. So if you would do a search in there, and, and now type government resources. That's weird. Um, it worked for you, right? That's what you wanted, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think I must have put in references, uh, resources for reference librarians in a prior search, and it came up higher. But anyway, mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you where this is. This is a little page that I put together quite a long time ago, but I, I've tried to keep, keep updated. And if you want to scroll down a little bit, Chris, it actually has links to a lot of the stuff that we talked about today. So this could be, if you wanted to bookmark this page for some reason, this goes to some of our favorites, uh, that EPUBS program, um, a couple of other pages I've put together. Uh, there's one, government links for kids that might interest you there that I just thought we probably wouldn't have time to show you that today, but uh, that has both some federal and the ENDS Guide to U.S. Government is done by the Government Printing Office, and it's a really good site. There's that CIA World Factbook. It's something the kids should all know about, just like Molly found out on her own. And it's, it's, secret, it's though. Yeah, because uh, it's a CIA. Is, yeah, who knew? Um, there's a huge site. Um, it's sort of an aggregate site that, that has all sorts of government statistics on it. They've actually got a kids site, kids.gov. Um, there's, yeah, an in the, un la, la, la. the unicameral has one too that takes you to history of the unicameral. You know, we're the only place in the nation that's got the one house government. And that writing a report on Nebraska is, is a Nebraska access page that we put together that's got all kinds of cool stuff there. And a lot of it is government related stuff. So, you know, if you're interested um, in that resources for rep government resources for reference librarians, um, that might be one you'd want to bookmark if you wanted to. And I think that's all I have to say. Okay, does anybody have any questions, comments, anything? Um, you can go ahead and type in the text chat. Um, any last questions you may have? <clears throat> okay, very quiet group today, I guess. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and Bye. you're getting applause there from people now. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. <laughs> Um, okay, I guess we covered everything you ever wanted to know about GovDoc. <laughs> <laughs> and um, more that you didn't want to know. Yes. <laughs> Thanks okay. for listening. So, does, uh, no, um, Crawford, do you have a question? You can type into the text chat if you want. Mm -hmm. Did you put it as a day? Oh, yep, I'll have her down for attending, Ellen. Yep, no problem. Okay. So we had a full group today. Everybody who signed up actually came. That's great. <laughs> Doesn't happen every week. Um, okay, well, thank you very much. Um, you can contact anyone um, here on the list if you do have any future questions that you come up with um, after the session's over. It is recorded, so um, it will be available for you to listen to. And I hope that you will join us next week when our topic it will be how to lead a book group for adults and kids. Um, so we'll see you here again next Wednesday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.